Malcolm Wilson. Hi, I'm Myra. Nice to meet you. Hi, is my coworker Evan is as well. I'm John. John Wilson. Jeff Wilson. Nice right on. This is Nicholas Erickson here. Kevin. Kevin. Nick. Coworkers. Evan. Evan Wilson. Nice to meet you. The big house beans. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. John. Where you guys from? Which tribe do you guys here for? Uh, Walnut yeah. Creek, Concord. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. So at this point, we have infused the coffee. It's generally about four minutes that we let it sit. And uh, this part of the cupping, we call a break. Um, it's an interesting time in the process because you get a full range of aromatics. Uh, so it's before you evaluate the flavor or the body, it's just like the aromatics of the coffee. And um, I, it's one of my favorite parts. I really like it. But you, uh, the motion is... It's just back and forth, and you just kind of want to stir them up a little bit, give it a smell, and then at this point you're going to let the coffee sit, you don't want to agitate it anymore. Okay. So I'm just, just going to go through and do the first cups, and then you're welcome to jump in. Sometimes there is coffee that just tastes like coffee, and it's great, and that's, I think, with that Colombian, you know, that really kind of robust, comfortable, you know, smooth, nice. Caramelly, yes. that, that, like that's right in the middle there. That's what I think of. And there are sometimes when I don't want the really bright Ethiopian. I mean, I love bright Ethiopians. There are sometimes when I just want a cup of easy drinking coffee, right? Thank you for and that. I think that's you know that was where I went in my mind. With, you know, and on the, the roast profiles, I don't see any mention of that. Is that just all even sand yeah. roast? All, yeah. All so, beans. So we're yes. this is for a sample roast. So we always. The idea is that you can have your coffee in the same way, so it's a fair evaluation. Um, so the profile would be, I mean, depending on the lab, it's, you want to be highlighting acidity, you want to be able to taste any defects if there are defects. Um, so I guess that just means a lighter, lighter profile. For the what, what would a defect traditionally look like? A red flag? Yeah. It's a defect. So if you think about coffee as a shared medium, um, you know, taken over ferment. So, like, really fruity coffees, uh, that could be a defect because it could be too fermenty. Um, in storage? Yeah, in storage or. Or left in a fermentation. Yeah, it's too long. there's just so many, so many variables. Too fruity is not good. Um, okay. mm. Coffee can mold. Yeah, uh, that's. Yeah. You can get. Too fruity is like. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you probably, probably like natural coffees. Um, I'm, uh, I've been on the like, African kick for like mm -hmm. an extended period of time. I remember doing other stuff, but I mean, with the arsenal of stuff, I just simply get some sweet marinas. It just makes it really easy to. I used to get the samplers. Right. Yeah. Well, and there's fruity on purpose, and then there's fruity when it's not on purpose, and that's when you kind of definitely shoot. Is that like experience that would tell you the difference between, again, the intended versus the well, fermenting issues? When we contract coffees, we know whether it's supposed to be a natural process or not. And the natural process is where you're going to expect those whole fruit flavors, right? Yeah. And if you get heavy fermenting fruit flavor, I mean, it shouldn't A, taste bad to begin with, yeah, right. but um, if you think you're getting a washed coffee and you get this kind of overripe fruit flavors, then you know that something went wrong. Yeah, it's cool that, you know, Nick and I, we, we have different uh, uh, preferences. I like the fact that he's got his preference and I got my preference. Yeah. You know, and it's not just like, oh yeah, I like that. So I should be like that, so I should like that. You know, right. And, uh, well, that's, that's it. Like, on the sales team, yeah. I talk to customers all over the country doing all different things with coffee. And at the end of the day, it's completely subjective. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like what, wine, I would say, like soda, like yeah. flowers. Yeah. Uh, I think so, so, I mean, this morning we cut some really nice Ethiopians that will definitely be similar to Pour Over. We don't blend any other coffees. We sell yeah. coffees to people that will blend yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, We're really just yeah, getting the coffee nice. into uh, the U.S. and then getting it into the U.S. Well, that's it's still 23 million pounds. Like Something like that, yeah. It's a lot. I mean, think about the containers. Yeah, it's a, it's a yeah. It supplies me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a middleman there. Let me show you our, our uh, sample room. So, 
people, how do people know? Is it my idea? Yeah, this is, this is I saw this. Hi, how are you doing? Robert Wilson, hey. Good. Yeah. Nick, how are you doing? Nick, how are you doing? Nick, how are you doing? Nice. Just giving him a little tour. But, so this is our sample room. Uh, Man, look at this. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. Each of these bags corresponds to um, an amount of coffee in our warehouse, likely a container, because that's mostly what we do. So it can kind of give amazing. you a small visual picture of what, what we do. Um, and this is a really busy time of year for us. We've been getting in a lot of arrivals. Uh, also, yeah. the port was so jammed up for a while that oh, from the strike. we were... Yeah, is this dumpy on you now? Period. We, we, oh, oh my god. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That'd be easier for you than what you're rushing out at home, I think. Yeah. So, this is our workhorse that we do most of our stuff for. Old Jabez burns, uh, 